Welcome everyone to the Immersive Technologies for Language Learning webinar as part of the dc webinar series. If you are not following the entire webinar series, you can go to dcfaulty.eu slash webinars to look for other webinars that we are organizing this week and all next week. This webinar is organized by four people. We are all from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Norway. My name is Mikael Fominich. I am a researcher in this uh, university in the Imtel lab. And together with me are my colleagues, Ekaterina Prasel Ferland, who is a professor in uh, virtual reality, Jose Fernando Garcia Estrada, who is a postdoc with uh, quite a lot of experience also in virtual reality, and Matthias Mira, who is our master student, also working in immersive technologies in language learning. We also have a surprise expert uh, guest today, whom I will introduce during the webinar. The plan for today is to give you a short introduction to immersive technologies, which are virtual reality and augmented reality, then to give you an overview of scenarios, how these technologies are used for language learning, to give you examples, to give you examples of tools, to give you examples of best practices and methods that are used, and also a brief overview of the research results on the benefits or possible limitations of these technologies, specifically in language learning. Then, in the middle of the webinar, we are breaking out into small groups and uh, immersing into language VR, which is a prototype that we have developed in our lab that is developed specifically to demonstrate the possibilities of virtual reality in particular for language learning. If you haven't downloaded the application and you haven't read about it, all the information about the app and the link where to download it and instructions how to uh, install it and how to start it, they are all available in the Google Classroom. We will also go through them, but uh, you need to make sure that you have downloaded it by this time or in the following 20 minutes if you would like to participate in the hands-on activity. I should also mention that uh, the hands-on activity will be only for those of you who have a Windows computer. If you have a Mac, Linux, or you're joining right now on a phone, you will not be able to participate actively, but we will organize streaming for you. So you will be able to see what is going on in one of the groups, you will be able to hear, and we will also provide you with the, some commentary on what is uh, going on. So if you're a Mac user, you can still stay and observe what is going on. After the, the hands-on session, we will all again get back to Zoom and uh, have a, a small conversation sharing your experience, your opinions, and, and we can also, of course, answer your questions and share our experience. I am starting with a brief introduction to virtual reality. Virtual reality is a technology that is, in very short, aimed to replace the real world for the user with a digital synthetic reality. It usually uses a hardware that uh, blocks your vision of the outside world, but it has a screen and it generates a different world for you. And it also uses controllers that uh, together with the with this hardware, the helmet is tracked. So the, the software knows in which direction you are looking, where are your hands and things like this. So this all creates uh, a feeling of immersion for the user. So both the, the position of the head and the, and the hands are being uh, tracked and the user can interact naturally with the environment using hands, using body position and, and so on. Of course, uh, most virtual reality systems also include voice communication, voice interaction. Many of the systems are multi-user, so many people can join the same digital environment and find themselves in a, in a different in a different world and interact there. There are different kinds of virtual reality devices that are available, and if you are not working with them, it might look like there is very many or way too many of them to orient 
but uh, there are so certain characteristics and ways to to structure that and um, i will just uh, give you a brief summary of different kind of technologies that are available one of the most basic technologies is a phone based virtual reality that is uh, using a smartphone with a screen and you can insert that into plastic or even a headset made of paper and uh, the software will split the, sc the screen in two and uh, display stereo image and since most of the smartphones today have gyroscopes, the this kind of virtual reality setup of the phone plus a plastic headset can also track the direction of your head movement in a similar way that when you're using your phone, it tracks if you are holding your phone as a, in a portrait or a landscape mode. There are also different hardware technologies that use different kind of setup in uh, one scenario on the that you can see on the left tracking is done by cameras that are installed in the room well on the walls on uh, on the on some other objects and they track the position of the the uh, headset that is uh, worn by the user in the other setup that has been much more popular in the recent maybe one or two years the tracking and the sensors been positioned or sort of embedded into the headset. What this tracking does is uh, in, in both ways, it allows the, the software to know where the user, not only in which direction the user looks, but where in the room the user is. So if you, even if you're looking straight ahead and you're just making a step left and right, the software will know that you are doing that and it creates six degrees of uh, freedom kind of uh, movement. So it tracks your rotation and uh, your translation. I can also show you here a, uh, a headset that I have. There are also two types of uh, devices that are two sort of categories of devices. One of them are connected to a uh, computer with a cable like, uh, like this. And um, all the computation is done on a usually a quite a powerful computer. And uh, that is a tethered setup. So you need to have a computer, but the glasses themselves, the headset might be slightly lighter because it's only a screen, not a computer together with the screen. But there are also glasses that allow you either both with a connection or without a connection. And here is the, that kind of glasses I actually have here. So this kind of helmet is not only a screen and a headset, but it's also a, a, um, a computer inside here. So it doesn't need any cables. It uh, doesn't need any external sensors. It just works as a standalone device. It has also controllers that you can use together with it, both in uh, both of your hands to uh, interact and to track your hands when you are in virtual reality. There are many devices, and I just gave you some examples here. But what I wanted to highlight is the top global technology companies are producing some kind of virtual reality headsets, and very often different kinds of. And you can you can choose between all those setups. Some are more powerful, some are more convenient, some are more modern, and so on. That was a very brief introduction to what virtual reality is, and I will try to make an even shorter introduction of augmented reality right now. Augmented reality is a similar technology to virtual reality, but it has quite uh, significant differences. In principle, the difference is that this technology is not trying to block your perception of the real world. It augments, it adds to it. So the as a user, you, you continue to see, to hear everything around you in the physical world. But in addition, you get a layer of digital objects that are not just positioned as a layer, but they seem to belong to the physical world. So the, the digital visualizations, like in this example on, uh, on this illustration, they appear that they actually blend into the physical world when you are experiencing them in augmented reality. So the most... Uh, basic example and the basic technology that is used in augmented reality is image recognition. Your augmented reality application should know from uh, beforehand some images to track in the physical world. And if these images are tracked, like on these cards in this example, you can visualize something on top of them. And it doesn't matter from which angle you, you look at these images, 
the visualization will always look as it is positioned there on, on those images. There are quite uh, many applications of uh, virtual reality that are built on uh, tracking images. And I can just show you a very brief uh, video. If you've never experienced documented reality, it will be very easy to understand what it is. So you can use augmented reality on the smartphone, for example. You simply start the app. It starts your camera on your smartphone. And through the camera, if you point your camera towards the images that the app can recognize, it can display some, some visualizations. Could be animations that could be just uh, holographic objects. And you can also interact with that. You can interact both with the app and with the, with the physical object like on this example here. You can also do a similar thing with uh, augmented reality filters, for example, that, but then you're using front camera and you use your face as a, as a trackable, uh, not a trackable image, but a trackable object. There are also much more advanced uh, augmented reality hardware devices. I have one here. Uh, it's called HoloLens One here. It's for, it's quite old. It's already five years old today. But uh, what you can notice is it has these uh, glasses that are transparent. And um, when you wear these kind of glasses, you see everything you, you want to you see, but it also positions holograms uh, on top and you sort of, it projects uh, back into your eyes what additional information you, you would like to display in augmented reality. There are other examples produced by, by other companies as well. Just to explain you what uh, these uh, smart augmented reality glasses do and then how they are built, they have many sensors, many additional cameras, infrared cameras and regular cameras, and they sense the environment. They, they look always outside of you and they try to understand the shape of the room where you are. And they build a 3D model of that room on the fly it will appear like this. So they, they this kind of technology, they understand the geometry. And your smartphone, if you have a modern phone, it can also do that. Maybe not as well as the, the uh, smart glasses that have many sensors and many cameras. Your phone with just a single camera can also do something very similar, a bit more basic. But the principle is that they, these glasses understand the shape of the physical environment around you. And then since they do it, they know where all the surfaces are and they can position holograms or the software can position holograms on these surfaces so they appear like they actually are there in the physical world. Another technology that can be used together with augmented reality and has an interesting application for language learning is object recognition. And here, for example, you can see that automatically a software can detect uh, certain objects in the physical environment of the user, and it can not only detect them, it can tag them and name them. And if you have uh, correctly identified them, you can also display the name of those objects in the language you would like to see them. I have one more example of augmented reality here, which is a video, and that's a futuristic video made uh, around five years ago about hyper reality and that's a picture a snapshot of where are we moving with uh, augmented reality and what the world can look like if if augmented reality is ubiquitous so i would like to just uh, pause my narration for a minute and let you let you see at the first part of this video Thank you. 
No, eso no es lo que quiero decir. ¿Para dónde voy? No. Puedo volver a empezar. All right, I'm pausing the video. There is a link even if you want to watch it. But I can uh, comment for the, on the next uh, few seconds. So this uh, is a scenario where the user is uh, on a bus and uh, surrounded by, by holograms and interacting with uh, personal assistants. And um, there are other interesting uh, features or applications or kinds of uh, content here. So. She turns around the, the bus and sees where the, you know the the bus is going, or points of interest they recommended on this uh, bus stop, brother. Then there are some uh, guiding arrows to regulating the pedestrian uh, movement back and forth. There is a green area visualized over the the road, and then it's the message clear this area because the traffic is coming. You can see, of course, the, the street is surrounded by advertisement and, and, and other things. So uh, interestingly enough, all the technologies that are needed to technologically create this kind of hyper-reality are available today. The only thing that is uh, missing is the content and the devices that the users would want to experience that through. Because holding your smartphone always in front of you like this uh, is, is not very convenient. And the, the smart glasses that I just showed you, they are a bit too expensive. Okay, now I'm switching to scenarios and examples and best practice of using virtual reality and then augmented reality for language learning. And for virtual reality, I'm starting with the type of technology called social virtual worlds that was um, very popular around 10, 11 years ago, but still is uh, around. And that's a particular example called Second Life, where you can see you can have your avatar and you can have very many other avatars in a simplistic graphical environment. And then uh, you can use a text chat to communicate with people like you can see here, but you can also use a voice chat to talk to, to people. And um, there were several millions of uh, users in, in this uh, environment. And you could access that as a regular computer game just on the screen. And I uh, recently found uh, a summary in Wikipedia uh, referring to different kinds of uh, educational methodologies that uh, could be used in a social virtual world like Second Life. And they, they also, in, in this um, article, refer to some of the studies. However, I would also like to point out to a recent review of virtual reality in language learning. And uh, I was looking for materials for this presentation and I found this uh, very nice review. And then I realized it's uh, done by Antigoni, who is uh, our partner in the C4T. And I would, I'm very happy that uh, Antigoni agreed to join this webinar and tell us a few words about the uh, the review she did and the most important benefits and limitations that um, she can highlight. Antigone. Hi, Mikhail, and uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. It's uh, really great uh, to be here. So uh, this is um, a review of uh, virtual reality being uh, used in um, language learning and more specifically in um, research studies that have been published from uh, 2015 to 2018 uh, related to the use of uh, VR uh, for language learning. Uh, overall, as you can uh, see uh, from the table, uh, there are um, a lot of benefits and limitations in the use of uh, virtual reality starting with the type of virtual reality that has been employed second uh, life uh, seems to be the um, most popular tool that has been employed 
followed by uh, more advanced uh, systems, either been uh, developed by organizations uh, or uh, been available on the web, like uh, Google Street View, for example, or a combination of tools. The language skills being uh, investigated and being uh, supported uh, by VR uh, seem to be uh, various, uh, including speaking, listening, um, writing, as well as uh, cultural learning and um, uh, learning of uh, contextualized information and support of other competences uh, such as uh, collaborative learning and um, support of uh, technological skills of the students. Moreover, the study has uh, shown some limitations specifically with the technical um, aspects of VR and uh, being a time-consuming tool, both for uh, the instructor to uh, develop it or uh, to gain knowledge on it, and the time needed for students to um, uh, familiarize with the tool. However, uh, research supports that uh, this is um, a tool that has Apple opportunities uh, for language learning uh, in all its aspects. Uh, I will um, uh, say um, a few major skills that seem to gain support by the um, uh, literature uh, is uh, listening, um, writing and reading, and uh, the use of uh, VR for supporting uh, specific communicative purposes or uh, specific uh, language purposes. For example, uh, there are a lot of studies that use virtual reality for immersing students in an aeroplane and the language needed for someone that is either a mechanical engineer in, in an aeroplane or a pilot in an uh, aeroplane. And uh, in that cases, the language needed uh, is produced by uh, the um, learners uh, in a, um, a smooth and communicative way in a context that the um, uh, environment calls for the students to use the language rather than um, using a text or a book or a video that forces them to use the language in a non-contextualized way. Thank you very much, Antigone. There is a link to this article in these slides, and also this article is now included in our recommended reading list in the description of this uh, webinar. And I would like to continue here with a few more examples. A modern equivalent of Second Life is called Ad Space VR, and it's organized around meetups, and very many of them are language meetups. You can see I just made a screenshot from uh, the, the events in the in the end of. 2018, and they were get together some meetups where people simply could could uh, practice the language, but they immerse in a in a virtual environment with an avatar and so on. There is another scenario for using VR in language learning, and uh, that is live tutoring, where you have virtual reality playing the role of the scene of the context, and then you have a teacher represented by an avatar, like on this picture here. Plus you have one or several students who can follow also appearing as avatars. And then of course they will be able to speak and to play some uh, scenarios in the context that is uh, set for the lesson. This is also one uh, example of the live tutoring scenario. I can show a quick video here. The video doesn't have a narration, but it shows a few other few other examples. And it's uh, a way to teach basically in a simulated environment that is uh, either not possible in the classroom or not possible at all with the with the pandemic. There is also a link to this video. You can uh, watch it a bit later. I will uh, proceed. And from multi-user environments, I would like to mention also that Artificial intelligence is also, also often used together with the virtual reality. And um, the um, scenario where it can be utilized for language learning includes automatic speech recognition. That means that the software can translate the spoken speech to text. And then using natural language processing, the software can understand the text and make sense of it 
and then using some uh, dialogue synthesis and uh, speech synthesis, it, the, the software can give uh, meaningful replies and keep a conversation. In that case, if you embed artificial intelligence into a virtual reality character or avatar, then the user can practice and can speak to an artificial character instead of a teacher. So that's a way to practice for um, students to practice individually. There are also examples of uh, systems such as sounds. I can uh, show you also a, uh, a video how how the, the software looks and it uh, really helps to understand how certain voices are produced. It is not only tracking um, how you pronounce and tries to understand and tells you, okay, you pronounce it correctly or incorrectly. It also can visualize for you on this uh, character model exactly where uh, your tongue should be positioned, where does the air travel inside your mouth when you're producing certain uh, sounds and so on. There is uh, another example I wanted to mention, Mondly, that is uh, a virtual reality application that is using also quite a bit artificial intelligence. They have um, lots of languages and many different scenarios. And then you have agents here and they have a, a, a possibility to interact with them and to talk to them. So they speak, they uh, they also uh, give you options on uh, what to reply. And one more example I wanted to mention is the use of artificial intelligence together with digital storytelling and 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 virtual reality, of course, as a, is a over overarching technology that creates also quite uh, immersive and um, <clears throat> simply interesting experience where you can not only watch a uh, video from a first-person perspective, but you can also interact with the storyline and take some decision what to do and so on. There is one interesting example here, play to speak, that you can explore. There is one more type of technology that I wanted to share with you, and that is uh, virtual reality immerse me that is based on real uh, filming of the of reality, but making it available to view in virtual reality. And I will show you here they're using three hundred and sixty degree video and. If you don't interact with that, it appears like a regular video, but you can simply, if you watch it on the screen, you can drag the video left and right with your mouse and look what's on the left, and you can look what's on the right. And when you are in virtual reality, you can simply move your head around and basically feel that you are standing in the middle of a square in front of Rakestock, for example. And then they are using real actors to simulate some dialogues and they're using also branching so that you can choose in which way the scenario will uh, develop. I need to switch to augmented reality examples. I just have a couple of examples of augmented reality in language learning. However, I would also here pause and invite Antigone one more time because she did not only a review of virtual reality in language learning. She also did a review of augmented reality applications in language learning. So Antigone, if you can also tell us briefly about your review. Thank you again uh, for passing the floor, uh, Mikhail. So um, again, here we reviewed uh, the use of augmented reality in uh, research studies published uh, in various, uh, from various databases from 2014 to 2019. Going through uh, the studies uh, using augmented reality in language learning, we identified uh, quite um, uh, interesting results with regard to uh, the potential of augmented reality in the, uh, being a motivating, enjoyable, and uh, um, engaging tool for teachers and learners. More specifically, uh, it has uh, the potential to increase motivation, satisfaction, attention, and engagement uh, of, of students and improve uh, learning performance in, in terms of uh, 
uh, several uh, language skills, including uh, speaking, writing, uh, reading, and cultural awareness. It uh, supports and reinforces uh, interactions between stakeholders. In this case, it can be interaction between students, or interaction between uh, uh, the student and the teacher, or interaction uh, between students and the actual objects that are superimposed in the uh, real life world. And um, uh, I think uh, the last one is uh, the most important for language teachers, that it provides, uh, provides ample opportunities for uh, giving to the students authentic language tasks and um, uh, gives them the opportunity to uh, use the language in uh, realistic contexts and um, uh, engage them, uh, engages them in real life scenarios. So if we move to the next slide and uh, see uh, the specific use of augmented reality, uh, we have tried to classify uh, the activities that have been employed uh, in the studies that we have investigated. And we have seen that there are studies that um, classify uh, the use of augmented reality as uh, discovery-based learning. For example, um, in that case, AR is employed for finding out more uh, about places or about op specific objects or um, as an object modeling tool. Uh, in that case, augmented reality is employed for visualizing uh, virtual objects in uh, real world uh, environments. A lot of interesting studies demonstrated the use of augmented reality books that is employing uh, augmented reality for activating uh, an overlay in the form of a text uh, or audio or a video. A skills training, uh, that is the majority of uh, studies, um, that support the enhancement of a specific skill or uh, augmented reality gaming uh, for um, allowing students to uh, play games. We focused on uh, the specific skills in the next slide and uh, we have noticed that uh, the most uh, investigated uh, area is uh, reading uh, followed by writing uh, and a substantial number of uh, manuscripts focused on uh, generic language skills and uh, other skills that um, have been um, supported include writing, uh, reading, speaking, cultural understanding, uh, support of interpersonal communication, uh, as well as um, the support of the sign language that uh, has um, not been uh, investigated in um, almost uh, not at all, I would say, in uh, the use of other technologies. And augmented reality seems to be a quite promising tool in that direction. Thank you very much, Antigone, for this summary. I would like to remind again that there is a wonderful paper that reports these results. It's um, available here as a link and the title. I really enjoyed reading it, so I recommend it highly. I continue just for another minute or two with uh, a couple of scenarios for using augmented reality and language learning that I found not in research, but in real applications that uh, can be used. So it's in combination with computer vision, for example, it can be used as a life translation tool, translating not simple text that you type on a computer or a phone, but it can translate you words that are that appear on real objects in the real world. So that's a way to bring maybe a supplementary activity to language learning to the real world, to the everyday life, maybe not even language learning, but practicing and uh, maybe learning vocabulary or other supplementary activities. I already mentioned Mondly VR, but the same company also has an augmented reality application. And the difference of this application is that it also combines speech recognition and uh, characters that are also called chat bot avatars. But they, instead of living on your screen in your, in your computer or in the virtual reality glasses, they can appear in your living room or in your physical space around you or in the classroom. 
and then uh, behave normally and then you can uh, also interact with them while observing them right in front of you so it's, they they become more personal more life and a bit more close to where where you are in, in your physical uh, reality there is a short video then probably can give you a slightly better understanding how that works so you simply look through your phone at your own kitchen in this example and uh, the, the 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 agent appears there so um, it could be not only a, a, a human but it could be any objects animations and uh, they are not only sort of hanging in there they can do some interesting stuff like this uh, chicken can walk around and and so on so it's a sort of a fun uh, a fun way to surround yourself with the holograms. Okay, now I, I am done with the introduction. We are moving to the second part of the webinar to the hands-on activity. So what uh, we have for you today is a virtual reality application, but since um, we are doing it in a webinar format, we made a simplified version that is available on your desktop and does not require any specialized equipment like a headset. So, and um, we can uh, try to use it today together. Again, this is a prototype. This is not a tool that is actually very useful in a long-term teaching process. It is made as a demonstrator to show you multiple functions, how virtual reality can support uh, language learning. So we have here two example scenes. One is a forest and one is a cafe. Each scene has uh, its own sort of atmosphere and its own objects you can interact with. But the rest of the functionality is, is the same in both the forest and the cafe. I mentioned already that this app was originally developed for headsets, VR headsets, but we now made a simplified version for a desktop computer. In the app, when you open it, there is voice communication. It's very similar to Zoom, but we don't have so much settings and control. What we do have is a way to mute your microphone and unmute. You simply need to press M button on your keyboard to mute and press it again to unmute. So when uh, two or more people have uh, their microphones on, there might be echo. So Make sure that your microphone is mute when you are not speaking and when you want to speak, uh, press unmute. We also have a text chat on the right hand side. To activate it, you need to press tab on your keyboard. And then again, if you don't need it anymore, press tab again. So if something doesn't work for you, you can uh, send us a text message from, from this uh, text chat. There are several interactive uh, objects that you can click on. And then when you click, the, you will hear some voice spelling. We currently have this application in Norwegian and in English. Today, we're using the one that will uh, look and sound in English. So that's easier for, for us to go through it. We also have a mini dictionary in the application. If you are picking up and clicking on uh, some objects, they will fill in this dictionary. And if you click and you discover all the interactable elements, your dictionary will be full. But now you see in this uh, screenshot, I only uh, discovered two objects. And uh, every time you want to open the dictionary, you press enter and this dictionary will appear for you individually. And then you can repeat the spelling and you can also uh, use speech recognition to practice your pronunciation, we will not go to this, although today, because this is a bit uh, too uh, too much. And uh, here, just an example of the cafe scene. 